it is completely necessary to show men and especially boys that there are many ways of being a man. There is a pressure that is placed on young boys to conform to gender norms, all of which are arguably rooted in toxic masculinity. How can toxic masculinity be defined and how can it be addressed? One of our favorite local social media personalities, Lassizwe Dambuza, South African model and activist, Sane Lekaba, and Springbok athlete and TV presenter, Raul De Mornay, join us to chat more about this. In today's Ingram Skin Sessions, we'll be looking at gendered beauty norms and the modern definition of masculinity. Gents, welcome back to The Loft. Hey! Yeah. Oh, Yo, what's up? <laughs> I'm so excited to be touching base with you boys because you guys are no stranger to our family here on Afternoon Express. But Bringing these mm. minds together for such an important panel conversation has got me all the way hyped. I mean, what Ingrams is doing is just mind blowing. So gents, let's just start off this conversation by defining what does masculinity mean to you and why would you define it in this way, Ryle? Oh, nice question, Alessa. I think uh, the traditional idea of masculinity, which is something I was brought up in, was very stereotyped, it had a specific stigma, a man's man. Um, and I, I definitely uh, think it's an ideology that has changed, especially in the current time we're living in now. Um, masculinity, um, to me, just kind of defines any assertiveness, any dominance that can come out in your character, in your persona, and it's just a different archetype of many that we should have as an individual. And Sanela, I mean, does this resonate with you, what Ryle has just said? Um, for me personally, I, when I think of my similarity, it's more of a, an insecurity. You have this ideology of how, you know, how I should be as a man. I need to act a certain way. I need to, I need to be a certain, I need to, I need to do X, Y, and Z to prove that I am a man. I can't cry because if I cry, people don't think I'm, I'm a bit too feminine. And I feel like that's how a, a lot of, a lot of men have been brought up in a lot of the families, you know, like, in, in, and I feel like that is is, um, has played a part, um, some part in what the situation that we actually have at the moment. Lassizwe, what gets me so excited to have you a part of this conversation is you are a man who has not shied away from every single corner of your being. Whether you feel like slapping on yeah. a wig today, wearing that dress, honey, or full on being suited and booted, you will do so. For me, uh, the, the word mus uh, muscularity and what a man is supposed to be like till this day confuses me, you know, because um, as you said, you know, it depends on what type of day it is. I can slap on a wig. I can literally um, the next day wear a suit. The next day, I mean, I mean, I mean, sweatpants. And, you know, till this day, people ask me like, this is like, are you a man? Yes, I am a man. And I think that that's what a lot of people miss when it comes to the way people choose to express themselves. So then, gentlemen, how can society's current views and expectations of masculinity and what a real man is affect men's mental health today? You have a lot of people now going to gym, um, doing um, certain pro um, procedures in order to fit into this aesthetic on how how a man is supposed to be like. But um, I feel like now it's I think times are actually changing. We no um, no one wants to conform to the traditional um, way of how a, a man is supposed to look, and it's you know it's and, and, and shying away from toxic masculinity. I think that mm. um, the in the new frontier to actually embrace this way of um, eliminating all of that. Yeah. And Ryle, I mean, for yourself, in terms of mental health, what role does this toxic masculinity play? I think it's uh, currently it's such a, as La Cesare said, it's such a confusing space. What does it even mean, number one? But number two, I can definitely add to the fact that current views are not healthy. It doesn't promote and nourish a healthy environment for the modern day man. And for all of us on the panel here, it, the, the current view is it's too stigmatized, number one, and it's too much of a box. Mm. What does a man mean? Does a man mean that you have to have a family? Do you have to look a certain way? Do you have to do certain things? If you tick those boxes, do you qualify as a man? 
This is a, a view which I think is so old school and so outdated that we should no longer even consider this to be a point at all. And we need to really con look at reinventing the wheel because I think those current views which are very outdated is, is what is putting everyone and what a man is supposed to be in this very small box, yeah. limiting us from our actual potential and limiting us from becoming and, and realizing our beauty. Like you see, Lassizwe gets the opportunity and he takes the, the moments to become who he wants to be on that day and that's empowering and the olden day views that we have of masculinity doesn't promote that it doesn't allow for us to from internally i think is where every one of us would want to put a wig on one day put a suit on the next be naked the third day if you wanted to but we are so afraid of the box that we're supposed to fit in that if we don't belong there we're going to be ridiculed and outcasted and kind of shunned. So then Lassie, as we are someone in the public eye, how differently do you think men and women's skin care is marketed and does it further perpetuate toxic masculinity? Back in the day, you know, your modern man wouldn't do a facial, wouldn't do manicure, wouldn't exfoliate, they would literally just slap on a, fa a, fa a facial wash and then they're done. And then if you go into the women's section, it's literally the cleanser, the exfoliator, the tissue oil, you know, all of these things. But now, you know, slowly but surely, we are, as a society, I, I, I guess we are now opening up to the idea of what is actually a man, you know, what is a man? Because now the modern man does buy an exfoliator, does buy a cleanser does buy tissue oil, does buy uh, a moisturizer and sunscreen. And that was back in the day, a female, you know, department. So we are, I feel like society, we are slowly but surely, we, um, you know, we still say, oh no, a man must behave like this, but it must behave like this and like this and like this. But your actions are different. Yo, we'll catch y'all at the salons doing your nails, <laughs> but you keep saying, Dad, a man is supposed to behave like this. How is a man supposed to behave? It just seems like there's a lot of confusion and there's some hypocrites in the mix. But I love the fact that each individual um, is defining it for themselves. So, Sanele, how then can we break down these gendered beauty norms? When you have certain products that um, say um, X, Y, Z for men, and and then the, you have another brand that says well, it's just slowly, slowly for women, if I can say that. And then, I mean, I feel like the one is literally this. It's literally the same ingredients as uh, something that, that a woman would use, but it now caters for the man to kind of like you know make make a man feel good uh, about buying a specific face cream or. And I feel like that's what a lot of brands have done. They've tried to like introduce certain regimes to men so they could make them feel good about like going to the going to um to the store and yeah. stores and stuff and buying these things because it says for men for example personally for me that was that was a problem that i used to I was like oh my goodness okay what will people say if i buy x y and z but then i realized i was like oh, it doesn't really matter like i use a, i use female roll-on because it, for me it's good for my skin interesting so. you know sanele that you have mentioned the fact that there is a certain stigma around just labeling down to the labeling yeah. on a certain package whether it's written for men or for women even though maybe the ingredients might be good and beneficial for your skin type so this is also looking yeah. at this gendered beauty norms and flipping it on its head. On a more serious note, gentlemen, we are dealing with the second pandemic here, which is gender-based violence. Now, with the recent rise of femicide and gender-based violence in South Africa, what message would you like to share to inspire change? I love that question, Palessa. And I think the message I want to give to everybody is to kind of encourage the entire viewpoint and that old school normality of what it means to be a man and what it means to be a individual is what needs to come out more. So let's look at each other more as human beings and respect each other for whatever it is that we are showcasing in ourselves. Um, we need to promote our beauty and realize that everybody's beauty is unique, number one. And number two, I think from the ground up and from youngsters, we need to uh, show them and encourage them to understand that every single individual has something beautiful to share with the world. And we need to really just truly encourage that. I think with that being said, it will allow for a better level of respect when it just comes to human beings in general. There should be no difference between how you treat a woman and how you treat a man. I don't see why there needs to be any box 
picking for each or either of those two parties. I think uh, if we go from the ground up, we should be encouraging our own beauty that doesn't necessarily stick to a norm and a box, number one. Mm -hmm. And number two, also to show the youngsters that, listen, everybody, how they look, how they feel is to be respected. Um, and I think with that can come a very different outlook on gender-based violence, and it will almost eliminate that. And, and, and with that, it just comes a level of education and respect for each other. Yeah. A very powerful message coming from you, Ryle. Thank you so much, Demone. Always that gem of wisdom that we're looking forward to. Now, Sanele, yourself, when we look specifically at gender-based violence, what message do you have for South Africans? I see like in South Africa, we have... Um we have a lot of we have a, a staggering rate of like fatherless households and i feel like um I feel like we're at the position right now to actually change the way our sons um, view females and mothers have like the opportunity to raise their sons to and change the perspective on how they treat women. And I feel like conversations are really important. And when you when you see your son coming home and crying, it's not like, no, stop crying and toughen up. It's more like express your feelings. Because I feel like a lot of um, children um, kind of when there's that, thing where you're shouting at your kid and telling your child to stop crying and to toughen up and be a man, there kind of is a deta detachment then. Like, the child doesn't want to communicate. Parents have the opportunity to actually talk um, and, and you know, and to groom their kids to actually respect women mm -hmm. and to kind of dismantle this way that um, this is how a man's supposed to be. This is, and then this is a woman, or woman is X, Y, and Z. Start grooming your child and to, and to give them... Um, um, wholesome um, morals um, to take out when they leave into, into the public society and, and to change that. Absolutely. Yeah. Well said, gentlemen. I mean, Lassies, we're very good and powerful points here being made by your male counterparts, Ryle and Sanele. What message do you have specifically regarding gender-based violence? I think for me personally, you know, we need to throw the whole book away. We need to start again, you know. Um, I like to go back to me growing up, because I grew up in a, in, a, in a female household. And like, I remember as Sanele would say, like, you know, when, when you'd come home and your parents, your, your mother would be like, or your dad would be like, hey, men, don't cry, what about a fish face? That book mm. needs to be thrown out, you know, because mm. the braining and the wiring of it, like, we need to start um, training the new youth, the new generation, that it's okay for a man to cry and to, it's okay for, for your little son to know that a female, this is how you treat her. You do not beat her. You do not rape her. You do not treat her like she's, she's inhuman. I feel like personally, we got to restart this book. We got to start again. We got to literally rewrite the story and literally tell how a modern man is supposed to conduct themselves, especially around women. On that note, we should definitely start looking at masculinity, the New Testament, and start writing that yes. book immediately. Right? I'm writing that book. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. in there. Like, <laughs> Thank you so much, gentlemen, for reminding us that we need to just fix in and change that foundation from the core. Cheers. Thanks to Ingrams for this inspiring campaign, encouraging us to speak more openly about these issues. We're joining them in telling South Africans that they only have one skin. So remember to nourish it and wear it bravely. Join in the conversation by sharing your skin story with us. Comment on our Facebook post with the hashtags Ingrams and the hashtag Your Skin, Your Brave. And you can stand a chance to win a 10,000 Rand cash prize and the opportunity for your story to be featured on the show. You only have one skin, nourish it and wear it bravely.